To get rid of those pesky ads, request stories, listen to unlisted and bonus episodes, and to chat with the gang, support us by clicking the description link. Surprise shots, surprise shots, we don't know what they are because they're a surprise. Wow. <laughs> that was good. Oh my God. I we think should it... make a record, guys. I think that wow. shit wasn't B major or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Cheers, y'all. <laughs> Cheers. All right, let's get started. I know what I'm here for. Um, I know what people want from me. Well, oh, and Tram, thank you for your encouragement. Yes, it's it's difficult, but it's not because I just I want to do things right this time. Just hope that just don't let me get to where I was before. Like someone like literally smack me and be like, you need to stop. But I'm not going to go where I was before. I'm changing my lifestyle. You talking about the drinking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drinking. All that boozing. Well, I will say that, like, I I, I was drinking a lot, not not excessively, but I would drink every night, have a a couple of beers every night. And then I stopped drinking. But by the time I, like, stopped drinking, was only drinking on Saturdays, I'd already gained a lot of weight. So maybe that will make a difference. Um, Yeah. Oh, for sure. You Ben, you just need to get on some Adderall, dude. I, and then some kratom on top of that shit. I'm running out. I'm. I'm. I'm and then this would be more, your. Some more so, yeah. some this more would be all you want right here. Because I. I don't eat shit anymore, man. I know you didn't have. But you always like. Do you want something to eat now? Well, then Hell you're, no. Then you're like your body really needs hungry. nutrients, though. Yeah, well, not until I get them sick abs. We are not promoting sick any abs. sort of eating disorder on this podcast. Anyway, we're actually going to 2019 tonight. We're going to Michigan, so this is obviously. Obviously not going to be a cannibal story at all if it's in Michigan. <laughs> Can you describe this person for us, somebody? Um, He has fuchsia hair. I'm going to mm. say fuchsia. Yeah, magenta. Um, Receding hairline. What do you think mm-hmm. he does? I'm going to say he's like, I'm going to say he's in his 30s. What do you think he does? He, a graphic designer. Oh, I was going to say computers. Do you think he's gay? I don't know. You can't tell just by looking yeah. at someone. You can't. You can't. Uh, you can't tell he's gay? No. Like, I'm not trying to be mean, but you can't tell? Do you mean the hair? Like, the the hair? Yeah, the yeah, hair. I mean, the, you could have colored hair if you're, like, really, like, punk, punk, All right, punk well, rock, yeah. you know? Maybe, I don't know. Although, is that a is that an earring right there? Is yeah, that, like, that's meant a, to be a signal? Yeah. Is it a date? Piercing? It's that's a what right I mean. in the right ear. They that used to gay. be a signal but when, when yeah, guys like had one, ears pierced. One they were supposed to be like, side, yeah, right? the left side was the straight side and the right side was the gay side. I remember that. But so this guy is purple hair. This is Kevin Bacon, and this is a post by by his friend Michelle Myers and his roommate. So he was living with Michelle Myers, and this is in in uh, Michigan. And if you want to read what her post says on Facebook. My friend Kevin Bacon is missing. He was last seen leaving my house on December 24th at 523 p.m. to meet with a stranger from a dating app, likely Grindr. He said he was meeting someone in Swartz Creek and that he would be back later that night, but he has not returned home. His phone has been off since approximately 6.20 p.m. It is unusual for him to turn his phone off when he's out and also not like him. So. Hmm. That's scary. That's Kevin Bacon. That's who everyone knows. No, this story. Gosh, like the dating apps are so. Ah! Yeah. How are you supposed scary. to find someone if like dating apps are the main way that you meet someone and then there's all of these people that like kill people on that's them? Not a, that's not a, I mean, think about how many people don't get killed on dating apps. Well, yeah, but still, like, it's a hazard. I mean, it's only like one out of a hundred people. That okay, get first killed. of all, it's. I feel like it's a little. <laughs> your odds are less using it as a male. Mm-hmm. First of all, mm-hmm. not if I'm on Grinder. I understand. I'm just saying, odds are not great for females and crimes or anything. Us, yeah. Well. <sighs> All right, so Kevin Bacon. Actually, let me show you what Kevin Bacon said. Like the Kevin Bacon. Like the actual Kevin Bacon. The actor Kevin Bacon? Yeah, because let's get that out of the way. They're both actually Kevin Bacon, so. Yeah, but let's just get that out of the way. Kevin Bacon did respond to this murder right here, and this is his Instagram page. I think this is pretty cool that he said this, if you want to read that. For obvious reasons, I'm thinking this morning about the friends and family of this young person, Kevin Bacon. His life was taken from him much too soon. His love was hairdressing. I bet he would have done a great job on this mess on my head. R.I.P.K.B. Mm. So I think that's, that's kind of nice. cool. Yeah. That's a really sweet statement. Because he was probably getting barraged, honestly, by... 
Yeah. I mean, because the, Ke- the Kevin the Bacon name, yeah, yeah, is very unique. Now, this was in 2019. I think this story would still be s- sort of popular, but definitely a lot more popular because of the name, obviously. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And also, I don't know if he was named that on purpose. Like, his dad's name is Carl Bacon. And, I mean, this guy was 24. Kevin Bacon was an actor before that, right? Yeah. I wouldn't name. I mean, have been named after Kevin Bacon? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So anyway, that's who we're talking about tonight. So this was a 25-year-old who went on a grinder date. Like I said, Michelle Myers was the roommate. She posted that on Facebook. This was Christmas Eve 2019. Basically Christmas Eve 2019, he leaves her home, so his roommate Michelle's home, around 5.20 p.m. That was... On December 24th, he meets a man on Grinder, which he's done before. So this is, you know, kind of a routine thing. Mm-hmm. And he didn't show up on Christmas Day, the 25th, at his family's for their usual Christmas dinner. That's when the family knew that something was really wrong. His car was found in Clayton Township, and his father, Carl Bacon, said that his son's cell wallet and bag of clothes was also found in the car. Now, the Michigan State Police is who investigated this, and... They, they went ahead and did the missing person report, but the cell phone that was found in the car led to the, the location we're about to go to now of the grinder date. And the grinder date is the one who killed him. And the, the phone, I mean, because the messages was in there, you know, come to my house, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and the, like, even in that Facebook post by the friend, they knew that, you know, that's kind of online dating 101, tell somebody who, that you're going out to meet someone and, you know, where and that you plan to be back, blah, 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 mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The cell phone in the car that was off, the battery was dead, obviously. That's what led police to go to the location where they thought Kevin Bacon would be. Quote, I believe the conversation contained things they wanted to happen. The first lieutenant, David Kaiser, said of the of what was on the grinder conversations between Bacon and this date. Quote, I don't know exactly what acts were discussed, but I know they were sexual in nature. So it was kind of a graphic conversation. They knew they were going to hook up or whatever. Now, this guy, the date who I'm about to show you was twice as old. This is the guy that he met online. Can you describe this man? Oh, I remember seeing his picture when we did the headlines. He now. looks like oh, a mountain okay. man. Yeah. 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 And you said he lo- you thought he looked like Robin Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Robin Williams. Mm. Right. Kind of. I can see it. Like, I mean, you just give him a volleyball. And, uh... Wrong movie again. <laughs> That's Cassidy. That's Tom I Hanks. know. He did this one. I can kind of see a John Hamm if you take the beard away. No. That's Robin Williams. Look at the eyes, dude. I see. I do see the Robin Williams a little bit more. Do you but... not see the Robin Williams? I see the Robin Someone Williams. Someone else but... will come up with a better celebrity compare, but for now, that'll work. No, I think Robin Williams. So he's got a very um, Ted Kaczynski kind of vibe going on. Very mountainous, very unshaven. On December 28th, police sergeant Terry Burden receives a call. Now, this is from the family after the missing person report was filed, obviously. The family finds the phone and this officer, this police sergeant, has to go do a welfare check at this man's house. This man is a Mark David Lutonsky. Okay. This is at 703 Tyrell Road, Maurice, Michigan. All right. This is the guy's house right here. Oh, yeah. Doesn't even have a street view. So this, this is very rural. That's got to be some cannibalism so that's shit. That's a farmhouse, perhaps? A shack? A street? Damn, why didn't Google Earth go down that road? Weird. Oh, my God. If you're if you're going to a date's house, would what would you think if you're driving on this road? I mean, because it was not dark yet, so he's, like, out here. I still wouldn't be comfortable. I would be meeting someone in public first before agreeing to go back to their abode. Correct. Yeah. But now their conversation was very sexual in nature is what... uh... Yeah, but... Still. I feel like the that grinder culture is different. Like mm. that it is set for hookups. So if you're hooking up with someone, you're most likely not gonna do it in public unless you're both into that. Holy shit, it's not even a real house here. Where's the house? This is the house? Oh man, this is creepy. That is creepy. God. <sighs> Would not go there. The police sergeant, Terry Burden, he does a welfare check. He shows up at 703 West Tyrell Road in the Bennington Township. And a man, Mark David Latunsky, answers the door and he grants police access to his house. They say, hey, we're looking for a missing person. Kevin Bacon, have you seen him? No, I haven't seen him. You can come in and check. They did find the body, though, in a secret room, not visible. It was like one of those bookshelf rooms, apparently. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I haven't. So the, the actual photos of the case are not available mm-hmm. or anything yet. But apparently it was a secret room like behind something that you couldn't find. Inside that secret room is where they found the body. I've kind of always wanted to have a secret room. I have a secret bed. So in the police report, under Miranda warnings, Mr. L- Mr. Latunsky admitted to the murder of Mr. Bacon. Mr. Latunsky stated he used a knife, stabbed him in the back one time, then slit his throat. Afterwards, Mr. Latunsky stated he wrapped rope around the ankles of Mr. Bacon and hung him from the rafters of the ceiling. Uh. In addition, Mr. Latunsky admitted to using the knife to cut off Mr. Bacon's testicles, which he later consumed. The police, during that welfare check, they walk in and see the body of Kevin Bacon. He is strung up, almost like uh, the Ed Gein story, where he strung up the uh, Maurice Warden, Mm -hmm. Bernice Warden, and then gutted her. But this guy was strung up. He was found dead, naked, and hanging by his ankles, and then... He was castrated as the, the he slit the penis off from a further report I, I see. And then he slit the testicles off and then cooked them upstairs. Both? Yeah, but well, not he only ate the testicles from what Franks and beans. from what this is saying. A little bit about Latunsky, the guy that you saw. He was at one point a well off chemist. Whoa, really? Yeah, yeah. So Central Michigan University, 1987 to 1991. He actually worked for Dow Chemical. Wow. And he, yeah, this and that same year he was interning there. That same year of interning, he earned a master degree in chemistry. Damn. From, from Iowa State University. I was terrible at chemistry in high school, I remember. Apparently this guy has a uh, LinkedIn profile. You want to see if it's still? Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely curious. Yeah, I guess it's still there. I mean, he's been locked up, so he can't like take it down. Let's see. Oh, yeah, right here. Mark Latunsky. Oh, my God. Chem. At self employed. There he is right there. There he is. Oh my God. About. Mark Latunsky received a BS in chemistry from Central Michigan University. He worked in the Barrier Resins Division, Michigan, characterizing the rates of decompositions of polymeric materials. What the fuck? Seems uh, pretty smart. Yeah, sure. As a research chemist, he holds multiple patents. Jesus Christ. Wow. Yes. Not what I was expecting at all. Yeah, so this guy, yeah, Kim, he he got his first, uh, he got his bachelor's in 1991, it seems, and then he's worked as a chemist ever since. Until 2007, he was working at Flint Group and then American Chemical Technologies until 2019. And then after that, I guess it just says self-employed. What does a chemist do that's self-employed? That seems like a meth dealer or meth maker. Chemist? <laughs> like, you don't think... It, I mean, Jesse, let's cook. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Like, what is he doing at his house? I don't understand. I don't know. He is currently a married father of four. Oh. And it's crazy because at the time... <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Oh, God damn. <laughs> I mean, uh... Latunsky, the next day, so this was Christmas Eve, the next day after the murder and he hung him up and ate his testicles, Latunsky spends time the whole Christmas day with his estranged husband, a Jamie Arnold, and Latunsky was, quote, acting as normal as he can be. So he is a gay man. He had a husband? Yes. Okay. A strange husband. A strange husband. Strange. And they had four adopted children? I don't... I think... Ga- or, uh, the I children are... Biological. So he, he does have an ex-wife, Emily Latunsky, that says that her ex-husband had a long history of mental illness. Mm. They actually married in 2001, divorced 2013, and had four children in total. Mm. This was their marital home where he was bringing these men. Gotcha. A little bit more about the murder. Like I said... Latunsky stabbed Bacon twice in the back of his neck, strung him up, sliced his throat. He castrated Bacon with a knife, took his cast, took took the testicles out, and then cooked them and ate them. Quote, the defendant told the investigators that he often eats Rocky Mountain oysters, bull testicles, and decided to do the same with Bacon's body parts. After Mr. Bacon was dead, did you remove part of his body, specifically his testicles? Yes, I did. Did you move those testicles to the kitchen? Yes, I did. Bacon's DNA was found in a skillet on a stovetop inside Latunsky's house, and Latunsky's DNA was found on the handle. 
quote, he went upstairs. He saw that in his words, it was a new moon. Michigan State Police Department Detective Sergeant James Moore testified. Latumski said he normally eats Rocky Mountain oysters and said instead of eating the ones in his freezer, he decided to use the testicles of Kevin Bacon. I'm sorry. Like, this is terrible. I'm real. I'm not really I, I'm not trying to be insensitive, but I feel like the fact that his name was Kevin Bacon and he ended up oh, being yeah. a cannibal, like a victim of cannibalism is just wrong. Very weird, too. Ironic. Very ironic. Yeah, no shit. In 2010, he was diagnosed with quote, severe, recurrent, and chronic major depression with psychotic features, adjustment disorder with depression and anxiety with paranoid schizophrenia and borderline personality traits. That's a long... That's a long That's a, list. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And this guy was on medication too, but apparently he just was not taking it. Hmm. She says, uh, when he does not take his medication, he'll watch torture horror movies, talk to himself, stay out all night, threaten to get rid of his children's animals, claim their son isn't his child, and fail to shower and shave. Wow, Jesus Christ! So this was in the. Uh, she said that in the divorce papers in 2013. Wow. Reading from that, he's kidnapped his own children by failing to follow custody plans, kept her from her children from leaving her home, and made frivolous claims to child protection services, and claimed she and her brother were trying to murder him by poisoning a well. It sounds like out of a cartoon. What the fuck? This guy drinks out of a well. I mean, which is not weird, but like for this dude, I feel like it is. It's just a whole. A lot of odd, odd, oddness to this to this person. So Kevin Bacon wasn't actually the first man that he's met on Grinder. One man, a New York man born 1973, actually fled Latunsky's home prior to this event. Mm. He jumped a fence after becoming, quote, frightened after a consensual sexual encounter. Also, a 29-year-old man who uh, this guy, Latunsky, actually chained up in his basement. And this guy was uh, wearing only a kilt and got spooked during a consensual sexual encounter. So he fled, too. Do we know what necessarily spooked them? Like, or was it just more of a, like, things were starting to just get weird, like weird vibes? Yeah, I'm guessing really weird vibes. All in all, police were called to his house about a dozen times in the last 10 years. That's a lot. Yeah. So he was using not only Grindr, but also a website called rent.men. Hmm. I guess dot .men is like dot .com. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. There's like a thousand of those oh. dot .com things. There's like dot .pizza. So like if you're a pizza shop, you could be like Marco's dot .pizza or whatever. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So there's a lot of those. So I guess men. I don't know. Latunsky, as a chemist, was actually fired in 2019. Hmm. And it says undisclosed job, but then you go back to his LinkedIn, you can see exactly what it was. He was a lab manager at American Chemical Tech. And the reason he was fired, because he was refusing to take his medication. So I guess they I guess they saw some behavioral problems. Yeah, there work. yeah, yeah. Like maybe he was even just having trouble focusing on stuff, you know? Yeah, maybe. It's crazy. A chemist not taking his medication because you I mean, he knows what it does yeah. to his body. You know? Yeah, so true. About some of the other police calls that came to his house. Now, I know that Kevin Bacon has purple hair. Mm-hmm. This is this is a completely different, different uh, victim here. OK, this is one of the neighbors. He this is what he says. He's got purple hair. He's wearing a leather skirt and he's got a couple of belts across his chest. Park said the gentleman is grasping my arm with deathly fear, screaming, help me keep him away. Just screaming at the top of his lungs. He wants to hurt me, wants to hurt me. Another vehicle pulls in my driveway and out he comes, who I now find out is Mark wearing a leather skirt, belts across his chest, no shoes, no shirt on. His beard is braided. A very odd looking gentleman. A lot of the victims that are out there, and by victims, I mean the ones that fled. Mm -hmm. There's only a couple of them that came forward, obviously, because this is, uh, I mean, you know why, right? They don't want to be public. Right. I mean, because maybe they were in relationships, you know, with other people or perhaps not out. There's there could be a whole host of reasons. Yeah. So there's probably a lot of people then that were were freaked out by encounters with this guy. No, this is a current case. Obviously, we've done this on True Crime Headlines. This is currently going on. Mm-hmm. The latest thing what you're seeing now in the news is that although he's confessed to to the murder, he's saying that his story now is that 
Kevin Bacon was actually suicidal. And Latunsky reportedly confessed to investigators that he told Bacon he could help him disappear. And then he... Uh, but that's that's what he's going... That's, but that's interesting that he is going down yeah. as like... He said he stabbed Kevin Bacon in the neck twice. And then, because he wanted to die, this guy was suicidal. Kevin Bacon was suicidal. But that didn't kill him, which is why Latunsky slit his throat. Quote, he claimed he did this to ensure Bacon did not suffer. That's what he's saying. He's saying that he asked for this. It's like that uh, German story we covered. Mm -hmm. The Armin's, uh, or, or whatever his like name is. Like the guys that asked to be eaten. Yeah. But apparently Kevin Bacon was really well known, really well loved, and was really good at his job. This is a little uh, rock that they painted for him. So rest in peace. You know, it is sad. But I mean, it, it is it is going to be interesting to see it play out because I feel like someone wouldn't just go to a man's house who is twice as old in the backwoods like that. You know what I'm saying? Asking for all this sexual stuff. I mean, it, it seems that he may actually convince the jur the jury that this man was suicidal. I don't know. It just it just seems. But even still, that he still committed. Because you've seen the guy too. I mean, like it. You know what I'm what saying? What about? I mean, like, here's the here's my know. thing about that. How is he going to convince the jury that he was that that there's that no Kevin was suicidal? You would have to talk to family and friends, get records to see if he was seeking uh, mental mental mm -hmm. help, like therapy. If he was in therapy or if he had searched for check his search history, see if he had searched for you know therapists or if he was searching suicidal terms if there's nothing there like why would he confide in a random hookup that he's suicidal randomly on christmas eve but then again like why was well, he uh, on christmas going on christmas eve and not spending it with his family well then again christmas is the time where most suicides happen right at that time of year it's the most suicidal uh time hmm. i don't know why i guess because people are just you know, unhappy, sad and alone. I just, I just, I think it will be hard to prove, but also I don't think that necessarily changes the case against this, the person who ultimately killed him. Like yeah. ultimately he still killed a person, whether the person wanted him. it or not. Right. Like it doesn't matter. It, yeah. It's honestly not seeming like, uh, Latunsky even gives a shit really mm. that he's in prison <laughs> in this paper from February, 2020. He went on some kind of hunger strike and he passed out in his jail cell. He was completely unconscious and unresponsive. And this says, quote, after responders used smelling salts, he quickly came around and was transported to the hospital. After being evaluated, he was returned to jail. And the Michigan uh, Police Special First Lieutenant David Kaiser said, quote, it appears he has not been eating since he was lodged. Wow. So he's been he's been not eating, which is crazy for a cannibal. You think <laughs> I guess they don't have <laughs> <laughs> not quite his uh, his taste in the lunchroom, perhaps. Oh, my. That would be fucked up if the guards were messing with him by uh, giving him like a vegetarian diet, you know? <laughs> Well, he, I mean, we know he doesn't only eat human flesh. Yeah. So his mental illness history goes back quite a while. In 2013, there was a uh, a police call mm -hmm. response to his location, and this is in 2013. He claims to the police that his name was William Gregory Dean, and once they what? probed him about it, he says he actually killed Mark Latunsky. Like he's Mark Latunsky. He he tells the police that he's just killed Mark Latunsky and he oh introduces himself as William Gregory Dean. That's so... Isn't that like the plot of the talented Mr. Ripley? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Is that, I haven't seen that I one. Think, something kind of similar. It's really good with Matt Damon, Jude Law. I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Maybe though. That's This is a crazy story. Alright, guys. Well, I guess that's it unless y'all have anything. No? Alright, well, until next time. Good night, you lovely, lovely people.